Good hello, and welcome back to Mass Effect. Uh, last time we found Dr. Liara to Sony, uh, so we're going to check in with our crew right now and see how everyone's doing. Uh, we also, I believe, oh, let me hear the, that. Uh, we got a few levels there at the end, I think. Uh, so we're going to put some points into things that are neat. So first up is to get our electronic skill higher to give us a bit more resilience, but also allow us to hack any electronics thing so that we can take whatever crew out we want to. Um, and then after that, we'll start focusing on possibly uh, Sentinel a bit more so that we can get to Marksman uh, or on Sniper Rifles is the other option there. So we have a little more stability. Uh, but I would like to get um, throw up so we can pick up lift uh, and barrier up so that we can restore our barrier in combat a bit more too. Uh, but let's start by talking with everyone. Let's start with Joker. I don't know if he'll have anything to say, but it's worth a try. Hello, Joker. I, I prefer gold to silver, you know, for my metal. I figured you'd recommend me for one since I uh, pulled your boots out of the fire. You sure, Joker? If we present you with a medal, you'll end up sitting on stage listening to politicians make speeches for a couple of hours. Fun, fun. That's a good point. They'd probably make me shave, too. I spent the last seven weeks working on this baby. No medal's worth that. So, Commander, why don't you tell me why you're really here? Um, why don't you tell me about the ship? How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet. If you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. Balance isn't what you'd expect. Takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back, and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. I like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? <laughs> I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I am the best damn helmsman in the Alliance fleet. Top of my class in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my disease. I'm sorry, Joker. I didn't even know you were sick. You mean... You mean you didn't know? Oh, crap. Okay, I've got Vrolich syndrome, brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow, too much force, and they'll shatter. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! It's very dramatic, but I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. Why does everyone call you Joker? It's a lot shorter than saying Alliance Flight Lieutenant Jeff Moreau. Plus, I love to make little children laugh. I was just thinking how much you remind me of Santa Claus. Look, I didn't pick the name. One of the instructors in flight school used to bug me about never smiling. She started calling me Joker, and it stuck. I have to go. All right, see ya. Okay. Uh, we also picked up some codex entries, so we're going to double check what those are. We do have some primary, so we'll listen to those quickly. And then we'll go speak with the rest of the crew. After. Thresher maws are subterranean carnivores that spend their entire lives eating or searching for something to eat. Threshers reproduce via spores that can lie dormant for millennia, yet are robust enough to survive prolonged periods in deep space and atmospheric re-entry. As a result, thresher spores appear on many worlds, spread by previous generations of space travelers. The body of a thresher never entirely leaves the ground. Only the head and tentacles erupt from the earth to attack. In addition to physical attacks, Threshers have the ability to project toxic chemicals and emit bursts of infrasound as a shockwave weapon. The Alliance first encountered Threshers on the colony of Akuz in 2177. After contact was lost with the Pioneer team, Marine units were deployed to investigate. The shore parties were set upon by hungry Threshers, and nearly the entire assault force was killed. 
Alliance forces recommend engaging threshers with vehicle-mounted heavy weapons. Okay. And... Faster-than-light drives use element zero cores to reduce the mass of the ship, allowing higher rates of acceleration. This effectively raises the speed of light within the mass effect field, allowing high-speed travel with negligible relativistic time dilation effects. Starships still require conventional thrusters, chemical rockets, commercial fusion torch, economy ion engine, or military anti-proton drive, in addition to the FTL drive core. With only a core, a ship has no motive power. The amount of ESO and power required for a drive increases exponentially to the mass being moved and the degree it is being lightened. Very massive ships or very high speeds are prohibitively expensive. If the field collapses while the ship is moving at faster than light speed, the effects are catastrophic. The ship is snapped back to sublight velocity. The enormous excess energy shed in the form of lethal Cherenkov radiation. Ship mobility dominates space combat. The primary objective is to align the mass accelerator along the bow with the opposing vessel's broadside. Battles typically play out as artillery duels, fought at ranges measured in thousands of kilometers. Though assaults through defended mass relays often occur at knife fight ranges, as close as a few dozen kilometers. Most ship-to-ship -ship engagements are skirmishes between patrol vessels of cruiser weight and below, with dreadnoughts and carriers only deployed in full-scale fleet actions. Battles in open space are short and often inconclusive, as the weaker opponent typically disengages. Once a ship enters FTL flight, the combat is effectively over. There are no sensors capable of tracking them or weapons capable of damaging them. The only way to guarantee an enemy will stand and fight is to attack a location they have a vested interest in, such as a settled world or a strategically important mass relay. Okay, so there are our primary entries. We'll take a look at what secondary entries we picked up. Uh, so, about the Asari writings, uh, I'll give you a chance to read this, pause it if you want to. Salarian League of One. Following, and then the final bit here in this is the Turian Unification War. Okay, and then the next entries are extinct races. Um, so Prothean Cipher, the Prothean Beacon downloaded its knowledge into Lieutenant Commander Shepard on Eden Prime, causing confusing, confusing dreams and visions. While the imagery is becoming clearer with time, the meaning of the beacon uh, communication remains elusive. It has been suggested that Prothean data recording is highly dependent on a certain point of view, what Carl Jung described as the collective consciousness. The cipher needed to comprehend the images implanted in Shepard's mind is the cultural knowledge of a Prothean and the archetypes, biological instincts and common experiences universal to the race. Since the Protheans have been dead for millennia, it may be impossible to acquire this cipher. Okay, uh, the non-council races, uh, we picked up some information about a couple of types of geths, so you can pause it here if you want to read it. There you go. And then Humanity in the Systems Alliance, uh, Diplomatic Relations, Humanity has encountered many galactic species, War have been, wars have been few, but mistrust is rife. Uh, politically, the Alliance is a peaceful trade partner of the Turians. As a practical matter, however, there is simmering ag antagonism and bigotry between both populations over the First Contact War of 2157. The Alliance enjoys good relations with the Asari, though many privately believe the matriarchs are aristocratic and overcautious. 
through though humans know better than to unconditionally trust any solarian with their shared restless reckless ways make them neutral allies against the conservaturians and asari the krogan have no unified government but individuals are generally treated as potential criminals a pop uh, Re uh, reputation most Krogan enjoy living down to. The Alliance has no formal contact with the Quarians. Their migrant fleet has not yet passed through any human settled system. The Batarians are rivals for control of the Skillian Verge. They severed their treaties with the Citadel to prosecute a colonial conflict against the Alliance. Officially there is no war, but neither is there any peace. Okay, and then there's some stuff about geological surveys. There you go. Uh, and lastly, ships and vehicles. Um, space combat, a little bit more on that, and heat management. Pause it where you want to. And read through it. At your leisure. Okay, so they are our codex entries. That leaves us with none left, and it gives us a good chance here to move on uh, to the next mission. Uh, we're going to, or we can pick up one more codex entry. It's a secondary, it's ships and vehicles, and it's the guardian weapon system. So there you go. Pause it wherever you want and read through it, or not. There you go, and we're going to move on to the next mission. Um, no, we're not. We're going to speak with the crew. That was the plan. Uh, then we'll move on. Um, so first off, we'll go back to the Citadel. Um, we'll interact with anyone there, um, and then we will uh, continue on to either Pharos of or Novaria. I haven't yet decided which one. Anything you need, Commander? Looking for personal info. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? Is this an official evaluation, Commander? Or off the record? Elenko, when it's just you and me, you can consider it off the record. That's a generous attitude. Okay. I think there's something wrong with all this. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction. But we can't get backup from the Council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here. But someone isn't reading it. Agreed. The council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but... I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the council should see this coming. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in Bot. That's fine. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, all Dan is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. Seems like you beat the odds. How many didn't make it? Out of 100, maybe 60 have no effect. 30 suffer adverse effects, little things like brain cancer. The other ten show enough ability to augment with implants. Not always permanent, though. Not like the cancer. Next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. And how's a kid supposed to deal with that? A station at the edge of human space. Jump Zero is Gagarin Station, right? What's it like? Yeah, that's the official name. Biggest and farthest facility we had for decades. Right on the termination shock, the outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do, though. It was a research platform then, and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. Then you must have had plenty of time to get to know each other. Yeah. We'd sit around and bull every night after dinner, play cards or network games.
Williams. There was this girl named Rana who had a little circle grow up around her. She was from Turkey. Her family was very rich. But she was smart and charming as hell. Beautiful. But not stuck up about it. I think you'd have liked her. Sounds like she was special to you. She was. Maybe she felt the same. But things never felt together. Training, you know. Do you know of any intentional exposures for certain? No one knows. Doesn't mean they didn't happen. As big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down accidentals. It was different then. No one knew the potential, so there wasn't a lot of regulation. Anything Kinetics did was gold. I'm not saying they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but in retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. Hmm. Yeah, so um, what we know about biotics is that... Uh, for humans at least some of uh, many of the other races had different reasons for developing biotics but with humans uh dust form element zero exposure is the reason that humans started to develop it uh so the first generation of um people exposed to it uh you know it, it really only affects the developing fetus so that while you're still you know uh in the womb. Um, so the first known um, generation that sort of experienced that is basically Caden's generation. Um, people who are around 32-ish in the Mass Effect universe. Um, then there were a few more exposures over time a little bit later. Um, Shepard, as far as I understand, is about a year or two younger than Caden. Um, and he also obviously because we're playing a sentinel his mother had to have been exposed but the first exposure uh, was in uh, Singapore um, was in Singapore in the um, fleet docks there uh, so that means that at the time when the first exposures happened um, Caden's mother uh, biological mother uh, I don't know if he was adopted or if he knows his actual family that's not really gone in too much but his biological mother had to have been in Singapore at the time of that exposure. Um, the later ones happened um, possibly still in Singapore, um, as that was, according to the Codex and the Mass Effect lore, the largest spaceport uh, in the world. Uh, so it's a very good chance that uh, Shepard's parents were exposed to it there as well. Um, being larger spaceport, you know, you have a lot of coming and going. Now, it, at, at least during early stages of space travel um, and early FTL with Mass Effect fields. Um, but yeah, so as Caden was saying, 90% of people who are exposed while in the womb um, develop either negative effects or no effects at all. It's only 10% that develop enough potential to use uh, biotics. Uh, so it's a very rare portion of those exposed, and it's only from people who were exposed at this point in time. It's very possible, though it's a little unclear, um, that um, it is very possible that uh, there was some artificial biotics given. Um, an example for that is a character in Mass Effect 2, who I won't spoil too much, um, but there is a particular character in that who was majorly genetic in genetically enhanced, and they may have found at a later time as a result. Um, you know, she's uh, that character is at an age where she couldn't have been exposed in the womb, but also she wasn't um, wasn't born as per a normal fashion. Um, so what we know about biotics in the Mass Effect universe is that at least they had to have developed at some point artificial ways of giving biotics to people. Um, now it may have still had to happen while they were still a child, uh, while their body was still developing, or maybe I'm wrong on that, but 
we also don't know what the results are for uh, the children of people uh, who have biotics uh, yet in the universe of Mass Effect. It's very possible that by having a parent with biotics um, that the child would also develop it. Um, that's certainly how it works with the Asari, whose entire race is biotic, uh, able to use the biotic sort of uh, stuff. Um, and um, we don't. We know some Turians and some Krogan have biotics. Rex is the Krogan that have has biotics, um, and there are some Turians that do. But it, it, it's uh, it's not all that many, as far as I can figure. Um, from what I understand, Saren is a Turian who has biotics, but um, it, it's particularly uncommon among Turians um, and somewhat shunned from time to time as well. Um, so it's possible that, like with humans, it's accidental exposure that it happens for Turians, um, that it wasn't naturally part of them. Uh, as for Krogans, it could be just about anything. Um, you know, it could be part of their adaptability that they have. It could be a result of weapons used uh, detonating Element Zero in various places because the Krogan are so warlike. Uh, we, we don't actually know what causes some Krogan to develop biotics. Um, but yeah, what this line was basically saying is Shepard uh, is asking if Caden suspects that some of the exposures of uh, human children were deliberate as opposed to accidental. Uh, and Caden is basically saying... Um, he thinks that there were some deliberate exposures to try and get more kids with biotics, uh, but there's no way to prove it. Uh, and from, you know, everything we've seen from humans in this uh, universe, uh, like um, various organisations and uh, the racism and the, and the push to drive humanity forward, it would not surprise me if there were... Um, if there were some deliberate exposures. Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the vids. But that's my own baggage, Commander. No bearing on this. Alenko, there's no regulation that says you can't be friends with your Commander. I appreciate that, Commander. I just don't want you to think that I'm a, a whiner. Besides, I've got my past squared away. Okay. Anything you need, Commander? What's your opinion on the last mission? Dr. Tassoni. Seems like a sweet girl. Easy on the eyes. I mean, if you like the bookish sort. Any intentions there, Lieutenant? No, Commander. Just art appreciation. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Commander? Okay. Uh, so yeah, we got some codex entries on that. So, uh, I think... Yeah, I think it'll be on Jump Zero, Gagarin Station. Yeah, Jump Zero uh, is also called Gagarin Station. Um, it's also the one we read about, uh, I believe. Uh, no, it's not, because we read about the Grissom Academy. And technology, uh, biotic amps and biotic training. There you go. So there are those two fairly major parts of this universe. Uh, we're going to look up here for any more codex. Yep, there we go. Any more? Nope. Uh, so that's about sleeper pods, so we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, but first we'll come in here to what is the captain's cabin. Or the commander's cabin in our case and there is nothing in here to get um, and so we'll go speak with our new new squad member uh, Liara to Sony I'll replenish our medigel if need to commander are you coming to check up on me you look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. It's very good. You're in good hands. 
Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. Yeah, I, I figured that. They were trying to kill Don't you. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. Tell me about yourself, Liara. Me? I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. I spend most of my time on remote digs, unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. Sounds dangerous. And lonely. Sometimes I would run afoul of indigenous life forms or stumble across a small band of mercenaries or privateers. But I was always careful. Until the Geth followed me to Artemis Tau, I never found myself in any situation my biotics could not handle. As for the solitude, well, that is one aspect that most appealed to me. Sometimes I just need to get away from other people. Yeah, I understand that. You must enjoy something about it. I love my work. Seeking out history's lost secrets has a special appeal for me. You were actually touched by working Prothean technology. That is why I find you so fascinating, Commander. I'm fascinating. Sounds like you want to dissect me in a lab somewhere. What? No, I did not mean to insinuate. Uh, I never meant to offend you, Shepard. I only meant that you would be an interesting specimen for an in-depth study. Uh, no, that's even worse. Relax. Calm down, Liara. I was only joking. Joking? Oh, by the goddess, how could I be so dense? You must think I am a complete and utter fool. Now you know why I prefer to spend my time in the field with data disks and computers. I always seem to say something embarrassing around other people. Please, just pretend this conversation never happened. Okay. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. This hurts you, doesn't it? None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Venezia in many years, but I know her, and this was not like her. Something changed. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council, and we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term, not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved, but it is not an essential element of the union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits onto our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. You Asari lived for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? Few sapient species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. Do you know who Matriarch Venezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father 
if you want to use that term, was another Asari. Venezia never told you her partner's name? Union with our own kind is no longer common, not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained, or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pure blood, though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face. It is a great insult among my people. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. Maybe she wanted to meet you, but couldn't. Something could have happened to her. Maybe she passed away. You might be right. I hope you are. But I have no way to know for sure. Benezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. Hmm. Okay. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. So, there's some more codex which we'll let you read through really quickly. So, Council Races, Asari Culture. There's that one. And we also picked up Extinct Races, the Prothean Beacons. A beacon was a Prothean artifact unearthed on the Alliance colony of Eden Prime. Its resemblance to the Prothean databanks recovered on Mars provoked immediate interest from the Alliance and the Citadel Council. It proved to be a solid state data storage device, part of the galaxy spanning comm network similar to the modern extranet. Intact Prothean paleo technology is rare. The beacon seemed to promise another quantum leap of technology akin to the discovery of the Mass Effect drive and relays. Unfortunately, the beacon also drew the attention of the rogue Spectre Seren Arterius and his synthetic allies, the Geth. A dawn raid by his flagship, Sovereign, resulted in hundreds of civilian casualties. The beacon was badly damaged. The motives behind the attack are still being investigated. During the recovery operation, the beacon fired a pulse of energy at the executive officer of the Alliance frigate Normandy. Lieutenant Commander Shepard survived and appears to have suffered no ill effects. Afterwards, the beacon fell inert. The mechanism appears to be dead. And ships. So... Here is some information on um, hot bunking, which is not quite as interesting as it sounds. There you go. Okay, any primaries? No, so let's move on to the next crew member to speak with. That means we're going downstairs now. Here we are. Uh, so let's start with the person that we don't really like much, Ashley. Commander, you have a minute to talk. Is this duty related, Chief? No, sir. Well, maybe. I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? Don't mince words, Chief. What's your concern? This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. You don't trust the Alliance's allies? I'm not sure I'd call the Council races allies. We, humanity, I mean, have to learn to rely on ourselves. I trust that's not insubordination, I hear. No, sir. That's patriotism. As noble as the Council members seem now, if their backs are against the wall, they'll abandon us.
Um... I don't see that as inevitable. Look, if you're fighting a bear, and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. As much as you love your dog, it isn't human. It's not racism, not really. Members of their species will always be more important to them than humans are. See, this is why we don't like Ashley. She's comparing aliens to animals, and before anyone tries to defend it of, oh, she could actually compare humans to animals and aliens to humans. Yeah, except that you're wrong because on the Citadel she also said, I can't tell the aliens from the animals. So she is comparing aliens to animals. We don't like her because she is one of the biggest racist pieces of absolute bovine, bovine defecate in existence. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to... This is an Alliance warship, not the Parliament floor. If you're Earth first, vote for the Terra Firma party. Terra Firma is a pack of jackals. The founders had ideals. These days they just play off xenophobia and bigotry. Hello. I hope my reasons are more rational. No, they're really not. My father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. I guess we just tend to think of Earth's interests as our own. It doesn't sound like you've worked with aliens before. No, sir. Mainly I've been groundside, part of the surface garrison forces. I did get a rotation on a space station for training. Every Marine a rifleman, every rifleman ZG certified. Guess you make a habit of second guessing your superiors. I. no, sir. I come from a military family, too. My parents were both Navy. Anybody in your family we might know? Couldn't say, Commander. We probably have a lot in common. You join up to carry on the tradition? Um, okay, here's an interesting idea. Why did we join the Alliance? Uh, did we do it to see space? Um, to carry on the tradi tradition of our family for the action. Uh, I don't know. I think we carried on the tradition of uh, military service uh, not for our parents' sake, um, for the for the action, maybe? Um, I see it as more likely that uh, our character is fighting for injustice. Um, you know, uh, her, his parents' ship, um, his mother's ship at some point in the past um, has encountered various Batarian slavers. We know that Shepard was later sent to Torfan and lost most of his unit, but he cared more about wiping out the slavers. Um, so we know our guy hates slavers. Um, so I think he's more interested in justice, regardless of the cost to his own people. Um, but uh, it's not to see space. It's not to serve the Alliance. I don't think he did it for his family, which would leave... I don't think they meant to Look, start a family mind, I clicked the wrong thing. But after 16 years on ships and stations, how could I spend my life on the ground? Well, apparently You're that's... lucky. I spent most of my career as groundside garrison. Can we do that again? I come from a military Couldn't family, Couldn't say, too. Commander. We probably there have you. a lot in common. You join up to carry on the tradition? I'm here to put hypervelocity rounds through the heads of bad guys. Most satisfying part of the job, Commander. I expect you to keep your family politics to yourself, Chief. This mission will be difficult enough without you picking fights with aliens. Aye, aye, Commander. What's your opinion on the last mission? Not sure I buy Dr. Tassoni's story about her and her mom not talking. They're family, right? Yeah, but they're also Asari, which lived for near on a thousand years. Uh, it's not uncommon for people, uh, for humans, to go, you know weeks, months, uh, without speaking to their family members. Even, you know, even when there's amicable um, relationship there, when there's nothing wrong, um, it's still not uncommon for one reason or another. Um, we know that Leara um, was often at dig sites, which means she was in quite often areas of uncharted space that might not have a reliable um, extra net connection to actually contact her mother. 
And because they live for near on a thousand years, it doesn't surprise me that when you scale up like that um, from, you know, humans who might go weeks or months without speaking to family members or friends uh, to someone that lives for a thousand years, that you end up in the scale of years without speaking to her mother. Um, and it probably isn't uncommon for Asari to go a few years, um, even possibly at sometimes decades, without speaking to a relative. Galaxy is a big place. I think she's being straight with us. Or at least, I don't think she lies very often. Yeah, she's probably really bad at it. Hey, want me to ask her about her sex life? Might be illuminating. Is that the best way to spend your time, Chief? I read you, Commander. I'll behave. Too bad those ruins got destroyed. I mean, they lasted thousands of years. That's impressive. Do you have a few minutes to talk one-on-one? -on -one? I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duty squared away. Okay. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. Dismissed, Chief. Sir. You know, Ashley, if there's ever some high-stakes mission in which I have to choose between you and another squad member, I am choosing absolutely anyone else. Why did you want to be a CSEC officer in the first place? Hmm. That's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. Like what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it, too. He was CSEC, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. That's tough. But you'd think he'd be impressed you're going after Saren. My father's a CSEC man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all, he says. He thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Saren. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger, for the same reasons. Um, you had the opportunity to be a Spectre? You were asked to be a Spectre? Well, I was targeted as a possible Spectre candidate. Me and about a thousand other Turian military recruits. I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power with no accountability. He wouldn't like you, Commander. Completely understandable. Not all Spectres are like Saren, you know. Of course not. But Saren's not going to play by our rules, c sex rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. Just because you can break the rules doesn't mean you should. I don't need to stoop to Saren's level to stop him. And neither do you, Garrus. I see what you mean, but... I'll think about it. Thanks, Commander. Okay. So, we found out that Turian culture is a... Uh... Military service is mandatory. Uh, their doctrine. So here you go. Boot camp on begins on fifteenth birthday for Turians. Uh, as for Terra Firma Party, they are a group of anti-aliens, basically. Um, so we've got Saren on the run. Yep. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good? He's rotten. To the core. I could tell as soon as I met him. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would have if I thought it was important. I think I'd like to hear about it just the same. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well, and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. What did Saren want with the ship? 
I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. Didn't even wait to get paid. What kind of cargo was the freighter carrying? What was Saren after? I don't know. All I saw on that ship was food and medical supplies. There were some basic weapons, but nothing big. If there was anything of value on that ship, I didn't see it. That's why I didn't mention it sooner. Whose ship was it? There was a Volus trading vessel. Big one. Lots of guards. But they were no match for us. That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week. Every damn one. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. I think we've gone through that. So long, Rex. Um, Shepherd. If not, we'll go through it another time. Um, but yeah, we've we've spoken to most people. There's just tally left, I think. Oh, codex entries. Oh. Hello, Shepherd. Oh, what's wrong, Tally? Are you okay? I don't know. Your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me. Especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving. And the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? The silence wakes you up? Back on the flotilla, the last thing you want to hear is silence. It means an engine's died or an air filter shut down. I guess you don't have to worry about that here. But old habits die hard. But it's more than just a silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. Sounds like the pilgrimage isn't just about finding resources for the fleet. Maybe it's about teaching you to appreciate your people and culture. You're probably right. We Quarians spend our whole lives traveling. But really, we never leave home. The pilgrimage has given me a whole new perspective on our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. You do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Saren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. I should go. See you later. Thanks, Tally. We like Tally. We like Liara. We like Rex. We like Garrus. And don't mind Caden. Caden's a good guy. He's just a little boring at times. Uh, but we are going to finally equip a better sniper rifle uh, and then we're going to take a look here we picked up the stiletto so we're going to equip the stiletto as well um, we've got the hurricane shotgun nope never mind let's go back to the storm um, and we're omni gel that one because it's a tier one thing. Uh, here we are, the Avenger uh, four. That's better than the Avenger three. Um, and we're gonna double check no new armors for us. And we're gonna quickly do that with the other lockers here. Then sell things we don't need. And after that, we will continue on to. Uh, you can have the Avenger. There you go. Um, hurricane, no, you've got the scimitar series. 
Hurricane is just straight up better though. We're gonna go Hurricane for that Kessler jaw. Omni Gel the old Kessler. Um, edge maybe? Yeah, you can have the Edge. Um, sniper Rifle, you've got about the same. Gladiator uh, 3 against the Guardian 3. Okay, so Duelist and Guardian are the same. They're a little worse damage protection, but much better shields. You're going to look at that one. That's no, that's the Guardian 3. This is Duelist. Guardian 3 looks a bit better. When they're exactly the same, you can take Guardian 3. Um, we're going to move on to Caden's Locker. Caden uh, currently has the Edge. Uh, so we're going to give you Stinger. Here you go. Um, that's your best weapon for use. We will also check here. We don't have any biotics or armor for you. Garrus. Um, let's see. You've got a Banshee 2. Let's give you the Banshee 3. Let's go over to Sniper Rifles. Where you've only got a Hammer 1, so we'll give you the Hammer 2. Omni Gel that because it's a tier 1 weapon. Look at the armors available to you, and this one is a little bit better, so we're going to give you the Liberator, which is a weird color. This is able to be omni gelled though. Um, we'll try and keep an eye out for better armor for you. Rex, Lancer 4, it's a good gun to keep you with. Um, Hurricane 2 to Hurricane 3. Uh, you don't use them. Uh, so on to armors. No new armors for you. Tally. You use shotguns. You currently got a really bad one, so we're going to upgrade you quite a bit. We're going to bring you up to the Storm 3. We're going to give rid of that one to Omni Gel. Uh, we're going to give you Kessler 4, uh, which is better than the Striker 2 that you had. Uh, then we're going to look at your armor and we've got this one available uh, which is significantly better uh, it is however a phoenix armor which actually doesn't look bad on quarian version of phoenix armor um, I like the look of survivor armor better uh, but not to a point where it's worth um, doing uh, as for pistol for Layara I'm gonna give you the edge get rid of your Kessler and you don't have better armor to go to right now okay so next up we're gonna start with tally and we're gonna look at your shotgun you currently have high caliber barrel 2 we should check ours before we check theirs actually when it comes to that the so first um, improved sighting 3 we're using that's a good one um, then uh, Hammerhead 3, we'll keep with that. Radioactive 3, good. High Calibre 3, good. They're, they're our weapons sorted. Now for armor, um, we've got armor plating 2. Um, we could pick up shield battery 3. Armor plating 3 is probably a better option right now though. Uh, so there's that. And then we'll start with Tally. Your armor needs to take a shield battery, I believe. Yeah, shield battery for you. Um, Layara, take uh, shield battery as well. But Rex, you currently have shock absorbers. Um, do we have a better version of that? Hardening. No, we don't have a better version of that. Um, but I'm not sure I want to keep you with that. I might give you give you some shield recovery. 
because of how you're built. Garrus. Um, stimulant pack. No, we're going to give you health regeneration. Caden. Come over here. Currently have armor plating. That's going to switch for a shield battery. Finally, Ashley. Uh, you can have the rejects. You can have Harden Weave. Okay. Um, then weapons. You need to get yourself a nice bit of high caliber barrel 2 on your pistol. I'm going to give you uh, armor piercing rounds. Thank you. And tally. You have high caliber barrel 2. Good. And the secondary part of it. Let's give you phasic rounds. I like that for a shotgun. Um, for your pistol, you can take. Um, I don't think combat scanner is going to help at all. So we're going to give you the heat sink for the moment. Uh, and your pistol can take uh, armor piercing as well. Uh, as for Rex, you've already got Phasic on your shotgun. Uh, your other bit here can take um, heat sink. You've got hammerhead rounds on your assault rifle, uh, which can have a recoil dampener. Garrus, buddy. Heat sink with chemical. Or your sniper, uh, and then your assault rifle can be, um, yeah, recoil damp. That's probably uh, actually go heat sink, and yeah, I like phasic ground, so we're going to keep it with that. Uh, but this one here, we're going to omni gel the tier one stuff like we do with everything else. Uh, omni gel the tier ones. Caden, no, Caden, pistol, uh, yeah, high caliber barrel, good choice, anti-personnel rounds three, uh, which means that the anti-personnel rounds one that you used to have can be omni gelled and then we will sell everything else that we're not currently using. Looking for supplies? Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. Okay, so sell. Oh, yeah, we need to look at that first. Explosives. We currently have Incendiary 3. Um, yeah, we'll keep with Incendiary 3. Looking for supplies? Yeah, we are. Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. Okay, so sell. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. There we go. Sold everything. Time to move on to the next location. Now we've spoken with everyone, we've sold some goods. Um, we will go back to the Citadel and check in with Anderson and Udina regards to picking up the Quarian because they haven't been told yet. Um, I believe last time uh, the asteroid belt, yeah there we go, I thought I'd scanned it and then uh, when I was editing it I uh, realized that, I don't know if it was this system or one of the other ones, that I didn't think there was any, when I was actually doing it, that there was any asteroids that would be surveyed in the system, uh, and then uh, noticed while I was editing that I'd passed right over it. Uh, so, might have been Sparta, but we're going to do a quick check here. There it is. That's the one I missed. Uh, Prothean data disk. Excellent. And we're going to check 
the back part here as well. Just in case. Okay, good. We've checked that. I'm fairly happy with that now. We're going to... So here are our other missions, but we're going to head back to the Citadel and check in with Kahoku, Anderson, Udina, and uh, double check the stores there now that we've sold some stuff and see if we can buy something better. Okay. Off to the Citadel. Uh, who do we want to take with us? Let's take our new favourite person. Well, I don't know if she's favourite, but she's certainly new. Uh, and we'll bring Tally. Logged. The commanding officer is ashore. Exo Presley has the deck. Uh, so you'll notice that uh, one of the mods we have here actually puts us in casual clothes on the Citadel after that initial uh, run there. You know, we're still carrying weapons around, uh, which is useful in that, you know, if we end up in a firefight, we can still defend ourselves. Um, you'll notice that both Tally and Liara are as well because Tally's outfit um, for clothes is uh, uh, this one now um, and Liara's is uh, uh, that but we will put some points in for these people so tally um, hacking is one of the most useful things you have so you're gonna go high on that um, I want to give you carnage I want you to um, get a bit more armoured and get a bit more shield. So next up is um, we're going to head into shields. There we go. Get you a basic dampening. Uh, and then we're going to put a point here in Quarry and Mechanist. Uh, and then we've got Liara. So Liara's biggest skill is Singularity. So we're going to focus heavily on Warp so that we get Singularity. Oh, and Barrier is good too. Then we're going to go heavy into Throw. Because Throw is very useful. Gives you Lift. Lift is also very useful. Uh, then we're going to want get Singularity up to the next stage, get Lift up to the next stage. Um, following that, I want to unlock Stasis. Get you one point in that. Get you to Advanced Barrier. And we probably won't put any more in Barrier. Okay, and then finally, uh, I want you to have some Asari Scientist. And there are their skills sorted. I'm going to save it here. We're going to go chat, chat with people. Rear Admiral Mihailovic, 5th Fleet. Commander Shepard, SSV Normandy. You don't know who I am, do you, Commander? I command the 63rd Scout Flotilla. You and the Normandy were slated for my unit after shakedown. Then the Council got their paws, claws, tentacles, whatever. They got them on our ship and you. I still serve the Alliance, sir. As a Spectre, I can advance our interests to the Council. Huh. You still know what color your blood is, Shepard? I don't begrudge the politician's decision to throw you to the Council. It's an opportunity. I do begrudge this over-designed piece of tin, though. You don't approve of the Normandy's design? This experiment diverted billions from our appropriations bills. For the same price, we could have had a heavy cruiser. 
But no, we had to make nice to the Turians, throw money at a co-developed boondoggle. I'm here to make an inspection, Commander. Normandy is an Alliance warship. I intend to see she's up to snuff. We'd be honored to show her to you, Admiral. I'll just bet. Wait here. I won't be long. Commander, I'm not happy. What did you find out of order? Who designed that CIC? Putting the commander aft of everyone else is inefficient. What if he needs to discuss with the operators toward the bow? Modified Turian style. They prefer commanders looking over their subordinates rather than in the middle of them. We wanted to see how effectively they can command with that setup. Hmm. Reasonable goal, but they should have studied that in a lab rather than on a frontline warship. I had to shake my head at that drive core of yours. 120 billion credits of element zero to make this thing able to move without giving itself away. You realize we could make drive cores for 12,000 fighters with that money? What good is it to hide for a few hours anyway? Useless! We can loiter in an enemy system and monitor traffic, or drop infiltration teams on enemy worlds. Normandy can be more effective than the Solarian STG. Maybe, maybe. But that's not the job of a proper warship. We're supposed to find and kill the enemy fleet, not count how many times their garrison goes to the bathroom. And we need to talk about your crew, Commander. Krogan? Asari? Turians? What are you thinking, Commander? You can't allow alien nationals free access to Alliance equipment. I'm Normandy's commanding officer. The reg state I have the authority to say who does and doesn't come aboard. If you disagree, send a complaint up the chain of... Sophistry, Commander. You know I'm right. You want them on board that bad? Fine. Don't quote regs at me. You have anything else to say, Commander? Any other justifications for the state of this vessel? I think the Normandy is a good ship, sir. Even if you disagree, you have to see that her joint construction and multiracial crew make the Alliance look better. Your job is to look good, Commander. The Alliance Navies is to win wars. I'm not convinced Normandy isn't a waste of taxpayer money, but I am convinced that you believe otherwise, and that you'll use it to its best ability. I'll be submitting a report to the Joint Military Council. It will not be as negative as I'd planned. Good hunting, Commander Shepard. Make us proud. Right, uh, yeah, so he, I mean, he was doing his job. He is an admiral. He has the right to inspect any vessel. Um, so that's why we weren't quite so insubordinate to him. Uh, it was a tiny bit um, just when it came to my friends uh, on board the ship. But we will buy those two points. We will not put it in Intimidate. Uh, we are going to either Sentinel or Sniper Rifles here. Um, I think I want to get snipers up as high as possible so that we have a lot more accuracy uh, because then we don't have all the wobble in theory. Okay, so onward. With all this exploration of Prothean culture, this must be like a survey for you, Liara. Our travels now are somewhat different from my normal excavations. I would prefer lengthier studies and fewer explosions. Yes, most of the technology I had hoped to bring back to the flotilla has subsequently attempted to kill us. Okay. Oh, Commander good Shepard? Kalisa bin Sina and Aljilani, Westernland News. Would you answer a few questions for our viewers? What sort of questions? People back home have heard a lot of wild stories about you, Commander. I can give you the chance to set the record straight. What do you say? So long as you understand that I may not be able to answer all questions. I'm sure our viewers will understand. Humans have been trying to get the respect of the galactic community for 26 years. With that in mind, what are your feelings on being the first human specter? The Spectres represent the best of every species in the galaxy. To be asked to join them is an honor. Some have said your appointment is the Citadel throwing humans a bone. Have you encountered any situations where the Citadel asked you to place its needs before the needs of Earth? The Council is concerned with the needs of the whole galactic community. We're part of that community now. 
Our needs are on their agenda, but we're one of many. You really do believe that, don't you? You've been given command of an advanced human warship for your missions. Is there anything you'd like to say about it? Actually, the Normandy was co-developed by human and Turian engineers. Its design incorporates many innovations, all of which are classified, I'm afraid. So, the Turians have knowledge of the Normandy that is being kept secret from the Alliance public? Do you think it was appropriate to hand Earth's most advanced warship over to the Citadel? Miss Algelani, I wear the Alliance uniform. And if you think anyone other than me says where the Normandy can go, you're sadly mistaken. No offense intended, Commander. I'm sure you have to follow the orders of your superiors. Of course, now your superiors are aliens. One last question, Commander. Rumors back home say you're tracking a rogue specter named Saren. Do you have any comment on that? I'm afraid I can't comment on whatever my current assignment may or may not be. Don't worry, we'll find out. The eyes of Earth are on you. Don't let us down. Thank you for your time, Commander Shepard. Okay. So, um... We will check this door first, then we will head up to Anderson and Udina. Hello, Commander. Show me what you've got. I'll open the rest. Show us what Commander. you got. Enjoy. Okay. Um, this is a. I don't know. It's a biotic amp. A very good one. Uh, it is possibly something that we're going to buy. Spectre armor. Um, not as good as what we've got, uh, but it would be well worth it. Onyx armor is somewhat more common than I was expecting it to be. I'm going to get the license first, and then we're going to pick up this one here. Um, Stinger is a little bit better than what we've got in some respects, and a little bit worse in others. Uh, not enough to have me take it see that one however yeah see i take a roku um uh, but it costs more than i'm willing to pay we're going to pick up the hmba which is a new biotic amp for us so we're going to equip that omni gel this um the old one and then we're going to move on up to speak with Anderson and Udina, which means heading up that elevator there. Your biotic skill is extremely impressive, Dr. Tassoni. Is that typical among Asari? While the Asari have natural biotic abilities, not all have the desire to learn to use their abilities effectively. And the Asari are the most advanced race on the Council. I wonder if all Citadel, Citadel races will eventually be natural biotics. I mean, that comes back to what I was speaking about earlier. I mean, we don't yet know if it's going to be a genetic thing when it comes to humans to pass it on genetically. If it is, then it's a very good uh, possibility uh, that all races will eventually be natural biotics. Um, well, maybe not all. Uh, again, Turians are a little bit more apprehensive when it comes to it, but certainly possible that all humans will end up eventually being uh, natural biotics. I heard what happened under the Artemis Tau Cluster. The Council wasn't too happy about the destruction of those Prothean ruins. This isn't a game, Ambassador. Shepard's out there trying to stop Saren from destroying the galaxy. I know, I know. Just try to be a little more careful. The Council's watching you, and we all get judged on how you behave. Okay. Now we've spoken to them about that, we will go check the remaining stores here. Is there anything else we need to do while we're on the Citadel? Let's see. Um, no, everything else seems to be out in the universe somewhere. 
but it's not as high a priority for the large majority of it. Oh, we also need to speak to Kahoku. Uh, most of it isn't as high a priority as um, stopping Saren, so while we could go and do a lot of these quests, we're probably not going to just yet, uh, because we're going to do what makes sense, which is stop a rogue spectre. Uh, I'm going to jump cut over to that store because I should have taken the fast travel and I didn't. Commander, it is good to see you again. Would you care to see some of its fantastic items? To Show me your items. Oh, this one is pleased to do so, human. You will not be disappointed. Uh, let's start with standard items, see if you've got any licenses or... Uh, Upgrades for us. Yes, you do. Liberator. Uh, heavy human armor. Well, that's not going to help us. Heavy, medium. Can't use medium. Light, phoenix. No, don't like phoenix. Okay, nothing else of use from you. Uh, I will take a quick look at your... Uh, Commander, it is good Tell to me your items. At your uh, oh, non-human armors. Thank you. Um see if you've got any for our quarian friend no nope, pretty much what she's already wearing okay so next place is up to the citadel chambers who are you to tell me what my husband would want I'm the only person making sense right now you're endangering your baby. This baby is the only thing I have left of Jake. I don't care what you think, Michael. It's my decision. I know you're hurting, Rebecca, but don't let your grief hurt your baby, too. Can I help you with anything? Perhaps you can talk some sense into her. I don't need anyone to talk sense into me, Michael. I'm not undergoing the treatments. My sister-in-law here is pregnant. And she's refused to let the baby undergo gene therapy in utero. I'm certain that she has a good reason. I'd like to hear both sides. My husband Jacob died from a rare heart condition several months ago. There's a chance that the baby could develop the same heart condition, but routine gene therapy can eliminate it. A very small chance, Michael. And extranet reports say the therapy could harm the child. It's less dangerous than the genetic enhancements that every soldier in the Alliance receives! What are the chances that your child will develop the heart condition? According to the doctors, there's a 1 in 50 chance. And if my baby develops the condition, medical treatments are available. Which are nowhere near as effective as simply getting the gene therapy. What are the chances that gene therapy could hurt the baby? 1 in 300 at most. But extranet articles say there could still be long-term complications we don't know about. Don't you understand? If my baby is that one in 300, I will always wonder if I... If, if I killed my baby for nothing. Um, well... Look, while, while it's your choice, it sounds like, um... You know... Yeah, the, the chances are lower to get the treatment, by the sounds of it. Um, so, you, I'm going to advise you to get the treatment. I think it is her choice, but... For what it's worth, I think you should consider undergoing the therapy. I don't care what you think! Who are you anyway? It's my child! It's my decision! Look, agreed, but... Think about it logically. Wouldn't your husband have wanted to give the baby a better chance than he had? But what if it ends up killing a child who would never have developed the condition? What then? Then you'll know you did all you could to keep your baby safe. That's all you can do. Don't you understand? I can't lose this baby. This... This is all I have left of him. And you and that baby are all I have left of Jacob. I can't lose you. Either of you. Not after this. Then why didn't you just say that instead of yelling at me? I was scared. 
I'm sorry. If it means that much to you, if you trust that it's the right thing, I'll do the therapy. Thank you so much. Uh, I guess we needed an outside person to talk some sense into both of us. Look, it's entirely her choice. It's her kid, not his. Like, he's just the brother-in-law. Um, the uncle of the kid. But, you know, when you look at the odds, you take the better of the two. Um, and if I can convince them that the better of the two, when it comes to odds, is that, I will try. And, you know, if she still says no, then that's her choice. This statue shows how well the Protheans blended function and form. The mass relays were not only their greatest technological achievement, but also inspiration for beautiful works of art. The Protheans obviously understood the aesthetic value of the mass relays, something we Quarians have learned to appreciate during our wanderings. Thank you for your, for your opinions on the mass relay. Now we're going to head up to the council, uh, and then down into the wards to talk with the shopkeepers down there. Uh, now you may be wondering, why aren't you fast traveling places? A simple answer is, it is very possible we'll encounter- You must welcome civilization after so long a time in the Prothean ruins. No, cities and stations were always my mother's area of comfort. I actually enjoy the solitude of dig sites. The ship I grew up on was always full of noise and people. The solitude of a dig site would drive me crazy. Um, yeah, uh, we might run into more people um, to speak to, like that couple. Uh, we might also get a lot more conversation out of these two by uh, running everywhere uh, instead of take uh, by taking those elevators. Uh, the elevators are relatively quick anyway, and it's not going to add too much extra time to our play sessions. Um, I haven't found your brother yet. That's not a top priority. Um, hello, Emily Wong. See, this is why we run places. Sometimes we see things like this. Hello again, Commander. I've got a proposition for you. Ooh. Since you helped me get information on the crime syndicate, I've gotten a lot more backing from my publishers. I'm investigating traffic controller conditions now, and I wondered if you could help. That doesn't sound like proposition, but... What do you want me to do? I've heard rumors that the space traffic controllers are overworked to a dangerous degree. I can't get into the control room, but you could. If you planted a bug inside, I could crack the story. If you crack this story, what's likely to happen? Ideally, there will be calls to improve working conditions by hiring more controllers and upgrading systems. The council won't pay for improvements voluntarily. This story will provide that pressure. What will this bug allow you to pick up? Just audio and video. I'm not trying to tap into the traffic control system if that's what you're worried about. I just need to hear and see them in order to correlate their activity with traffic efficiency. Everyone knows space traffic controllers are overworked. How is this news? There's a difference between overworked and dangerous. Traffic at the Citadel has increased by 300% in the last century, but traffic controller resources haven't kept up. We already have several last-minute wave-offs per week. <laughs> Do we have to wait for a full-blown disaster? This bug you want me to plant, could it interfere with traffic signals? Absolutely not. I made certain that the frequencies it uses won't interfere with anything. I can't promise anything, but I'll see what I can do. Give me the bug. Excellent. Just place it on a terminal with a good view of the area. Thanks again for your help. In the long run, this story is going to save lives. No, I'm waiting to... Commander, any word on my missing men? I'm not sure how to tell you this, Admiral. Your men were killed by a thresher maw. A thresher maw? That's not... My men wouldn't just stumble into a thresher nest. Not the entire unit. Somebody lured them there with an Alliance distress beacon. Placed it perfectly so they'd land right beside the thresher nest. Damn it. I had a bad feeling about this ever since my team disappeared. 
An Alliance beacon used as bait. My unit wiped out, and nobody seems to know anything about it. Commander, I appreciate what you did. Now I need to do my part. The families of those Marines deserve to know why they died. Anything you need from me? Not right now, Shepard, but I'll let you know as soon as I find something out. Okay. So now we'll head back down. Um, check out the last two places. Uh, la the um, shops. Uh, then we will head up and place that bug for Emily Wong. Uh, and then probably fast travel here at that point. Uh, just because it's a quick how do you do and back off again. In other news, Exogenicorp is still denying reports that one of their survey teams has gone missing in the Hades Gamma Cluster. When asked why communication with the survey team was suddenly cut off last week, company officials refused to comment. Okay. We head off down this way, around there into the elevator down to the wards, and then off to the shops to buy things if they've got anything worth buying. Uh, we're going to check in with the Citadel after almost every major mission just to check the shops again, uh, because sometimes they have really good stuff to buy. Coming up in a report later today, Emily Wong investigates corruption on the Citadel and uncovers a full-blown crime syndicate. Oh, that was a short news burst. Hey, hey, you're the shepherd kid. I am. Hey, been a long time, huh? I'm sorry. Do we know each other? Oh, I, I guess you don't remember me. Lieutenant Zabaleta? I, I worked with your mother. We served on the carrier Einstein. Well, that was 12, 13 years back, though. You were just a kid then. I guess you're not in the service anymore, huh? <laughs> you're retired, yeah. You know how it is. Times are tough for vets. They always are. I didn't see her much that tour. The ship was on patrol most of the time. Hey, call your mom up and ask. She'd remember old Zabaleta. She'd vouch for me. Look, I need a favor. I'm kind of short of money these days. I hate hitting you up for money, but a man's gotta eat, right? So, could you spare something? Maybe 20 credits. 20 isn't enough to get you back on your feet, is it? No, no, no. I I'll just get a, a meal. You know. Yeah. It's not a problem. You're a good kid, you know that? Thanks. If you ever want to come by and talk, I'll be here. Huh? <laughs> Can't afford a ticket home, right? Okay. So, yeah, that, that is a guy who supposedly knows our mother. Um, check the journal on that one, so... Um, okay, uh, we, I guess we can call our mother using the Normandy's comm relay and confirm that she knew him. Uh, then we got uh, planting the bug, we picked up the survey team, I think that was from listening to the radio in the elevator. In breaking news, Chairman Burns of the Parliament Subcommittee on Transhuman Studies has been kidnapped by biotic extremists. The biotics commandeered a freighter and were last seen in the Hades Gamma Cluster. No demands have yet been made. OK, 
Okay, uh, so go this way. Through here, off to the right, to the shops. We got um, this expat upstairs. Welcome back. Having Let's worked go. in um, Will you be needing retail myself in the past, I know how painful it is when someone does not bring required documents to prove they bought the thing there because it's not necessarily up to us. It's often up to the ownership of the business as Show to whether or not Most we excellent. can accept I things sure as proof of purchase. Um, and it, like even when we're the person who sold it to them and we know that we or at least here in Australia we had to um, have a proof of purchase for it uh, for the you know for lawyers and stuff just in case uh, oh you're back hey Commander Shepard it's me Conrad Burner there are rumors on the extranet that you've been made the first human specter that's incredible right Conrad we talked a while back. You remember me? Wow. Even while you're out there kicking ass, you don't forget the rest of us. That says a lot about you, Shepard. Hey, can I get your picture? I don't have a problem with it, but why? You're a hero, Shepard. Decades from now, humanity's going to remember you, and I'll have your picture. Just hold up your gun. Perfect. Thanks again, Commander. I'm gonna hang this in my living room. My wife will love it. You might your wife might leave you if you do something like that. Morland. Hello there. Welcome to Morland's famous shop. You want many good supplies, yes? Yes. Let me see what you have. Oh, you will be pleased, I think. Very good things I have. You will see. Okay. Let's see. You do not have very good things. Not this Hello time. Hello there. Welcome to Morland's famous uh, shop. But you we want many are good going supplies. to check your other armors. Oh, you will be pleased, I think. Um, Orion, Onyx 5. Um, yeah, I don't really want to buy Onyx if I can avoid it, because it feels a bit cheaty. Um, that one, however, um, Survivor, is fantastic. I am buying you the Survivor armor. Uh, you know, it's expensive, but I think it's worth it. Um tally uh, have survivor um, and then we can sell that hello one hello there welcome to, to Moreland's famous shop yep. you want many oh you will be pleased I think we're gonna Very look good at thing. these while we're at it um, but we're going to go sell we can have that and then we're gonna look at buying heavy medium light light bastion what is bastion on Um, I have no idea what that is. I mean, Liara needs some more armor anyway, so uh, we don't have enough for it. I'm I'm really intrigued by that one. I I do not know what it is. Um. Right, we're gonna come back for that later because that looks quite good. Um, it's a little bit more towards where I'd want my points to be compared to Onyx anyway. It's about the same sort of level as it. Um, yeah, it's just redistributed a little bit, but it's... Uh, Onyx is better, but not significantly so. So we might look at Bastion armor when we come back. Okay, so we've gone to those um, resellers. We're going to head around... Plant the bug, 
zip back to tell Emily Wong that we've planted the bug and then um, go speak to our mother on board our ship uh, as that was the quest we've just picked up and then um, we will continue on so at the moment we have seven med packs or grenades I don't know if we're at our maximum or if we can pick more up I know we can buy more um, licenses for um, med packs, sorry, uh, metagel and um, grenades, but I don't know if we've currently got our maximum amount that we're allowed to hold. Celebrations are being planned for the anniversary of the end of the Rachni Wars. Many council worlds, particularly Asari and Solarian colonies, will hold victory parades to commemorate the defeat of the invading Rachni. In a rare admission of debt, several Asari colonies have invited Krogans to be honored for the victories the uplifted Krogans made possible. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we're going up there to plant the bug for Emily Wong. Citadel control. Plant the bug, head back down, zip over to Emily Wong. Next time we come to the Citadel, I'll try and bring a different team to this time, uh, just so we get some different elevator conversations. Um, I think a good one to bring would be uh, Caden with um, maybe. Uh, Garrus or Leara. Um, or the next time we come here. So, two Citadel Tower, please. I'm already getting readings. This is going to make a great story. Thank you so much for your help. Here, this is everything I've got from my publisher's budget. It was no problem. Good luck with your story. It deserves to be heard. I appreciate your support. I hope this will save some lives in the long run. Thanks again for your help. I'm going to show this to my publisher. Okay. Getting paid is always nice. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll go back to CSEC now. Head up to the Normandy, jump on the communications, speak to our mother. It will probably tell us to do something for um, the guy there, but you know we've in got a, a galaxy to save. In the Eden Prime investigation, the Council has reportedly revoked the Spectre status of one of its operatives. While the unnamed operative has not yet been apprehended, a Council spokesman confirmed that corrective actions had been taken. Yeah, so we'll, we'll speak to our mother, um, and then. Uh, rather than heading back to speak to Zabalator immediately, um, you know, he's gone off to buy food. He's not going to be at the same spot immediately. Um, but we, we can figure he hangs out there fairly often, so if we bump into him again next time we come to the Citadel after a major mission, um, then, then we'll speak to him then. Otherwise, we'll just um, keep on going. Logged. The commanding officer is aboard. Exo Presley stands relieved. Computer, give me a real-time connection to the Dreadnought Kilimanjaro. I want to speak to my mother, Exo Shepard. Shepard speak? Oh, hi. I don't have time for a personal call right now. I'm on duty. I know what that's like. Do you remember a Lieutenant Zabaleta from the Einstein? Ernesto? Have you heard from him? He was one of the Marines who guarded the CIC. We shared a watch. I lost track of him after there was an incident. What kind of incident? You remember the Batarian raid on Mindwar in 2170? You were in high school. The Einstein's task group responded to the May Day. The Batarians were still pulling out when the Marines hit groundside. Zabaleta was one of the first down. He... he was never quite the same after. 
I don't understand. What happened down there? About every abomination that a sentient being can do to another. To a slaver, a person is just another animal. And humans aren't always liked out here. We heard about corralling, uh, culling. They'd shoot those they couldn't use, implant control devices in the skulls of those they could, without anesthetic. Gee, that's that's pretty extreme. He has post-traumatic stress because of what he saw? He tried to keep working, but it rode him. He showed up drunk on duty more and more. We couldn't always cover for him. The Alliance discharged him. Everyone knew he drank because of what he'd seen down there. Even if he never talked about it. Especially because he never talked about it. For it to have affected him that deeply, he must have been a very sensitive man. He was. Always in laughter and tears. If you see him, tell him we still worry about him. Tell him to go to the Veterans Affairs office. I have to go. But take care of yourself. You're making us proud. Kilimanjaro out. Okay, I think we'll leave that episode there. Next uh, episode we will choose between Ferros and Novaria for our first destination to chase up Saren. But I am probably going to do Novaria first. So, thank you for joining me for this episode of Mass Effect. Have a good one, and I will see you next time.